Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and in this video I have for you guys a card banger video and it's going to be on Fighter Selection 2015. The set is coming out in a few days so I figured what better way than to review it now, give you guys a preview of all the cards in here, tell you what I think is good, what is bad, what you should try and go for, and just my thoughts on the set as a whole, which I'll actually give right now. Honestly, I think this is an amazing set. It's not very often we actually have like a good set that just gives everything something. Fighter Collection usually tries to do that, but the last couple Fighters Collections have been bad. With usually one or two chase cards, and that's it. This time around, everything is rather helpful, as every clan in here gets not one, but two strides, and that's something that a lot of clans have just been needing, because if you're someone who's playing Tachikaze or Spike Brothers, you don't want to wait until December for BTG5 when those clans are going to finally get their things. You want to have G units now so you can keep up with some of these other clans that already have G units. This set helps. And wouldn't you know, this set has a couple of G units that take certain decks and pump them up to another level. Like, who would have thought that Mega Colony would become a complete and total meta threat? Yet, here we are. As of this set, Mega Colony is now going to become a legitimate deck. And that's scary. So, yeah, I'm going to go over the cards in here, give you guys my thoughts on them, and we're going to begin with the Generation Rares, then the Triples, and then the Doubles. And we'll begin with Holy Dragon Religious Soul Saver. So this card's effect is Counter Mass 1. Choose a copy of itself and turn it face up. And when you place this card on Vanguard, you have a heart with Blaster in its name, you can pay the cost. If you do, choose three of your units, they gain 5k, and if you have a number of cards in your soul with two or more blasters, then this gets an additional crit for the end of the turn. So, this thing is designed to work with Magis and or Blaster, as that's the only deck I can think of that can actually put two blasters in the soul in addition to being a blaster heart. I mean, you could ride Blaster Blade over Blaster Dark, over Blaster Blade, over something else and do that, but that's a huge waste of time. You might as well just play MLB and use the skill to suck up two blasters and get that effect. And in an MLB deck, Pretty strong. MLB gets that cross ride defense, cost of threat with a crit, this thing does the same thing, and it powers up three of your rear guards, giving you 15,000 spread across the board. That's pretty good. That being said, though, this is also playable outside of MLB, in that anything that's running Things Ever Dragon can also run two copies of this to get its skill. Why? Because, well, when you're in Legion, you can stride over any of your two hard cards, and what is Things Ever Dragon's Legion mate? Blaster Blade Seeker. So if you're playing Thing Saver or Sacred Wingull or Alfred Exiv, you can stride this thing on top of your Legion mate, and while you do lose out on 2,000 power to your Vanguard, you don't care. You're giving your 4 15k to work with, so that's going to force out additional guard after you've already probably gone through a couple Saint Blow Dragons and a Thing Saver Dragon push. Like, if they aren't dead at this point, this card will help make it so that you do kill them, in addition to, well, late game drive checks and whatnot. So this is a very solid card. I'd run two of it in Things Saver builds. You can run four of it in MLB and four copies of what's its name, Saint Blow Dragon, and that would be your MLB deck. Or you can run two of one and four of the other. Very solid card. I would definitely try and pick up two of these. Then we get Moon Deity who governs the night, Tsukiyomi. Uh, this is also a Persona flip once per turn. Choose a copy of itself, turn it face up. And if you have a card with Tsukiyomi in your heart, you choose a card with Tsukiyomi in its name from your hand and move it into the soul. If you do, you look at the top five cards of your deck, put two into your hand, and put the rest in the bottom of your deck in any order. So, more filtering for a deck that already filters a lot. Prior to this card's release, Coco Suzano was the best way to play OTTs, but now that this thing is out, Tsukiyomi Suzano is the best way to go, and now Tsukiyomi is the card you want to ride into formulas as it just helps you maintain that legal stack that the deck does so well and it just allows you to fix so many things like if you miss road and don't have all three sukis in the soul then you can use this card's effect to put that last suki that you're missing into the soul and you're good to go i don't know how many you would run of these as the ott extra deck is already incredibly cramped I mean, cramped wow and as you have this you have Takame Kazuchi, you have Kirin, and you have the other G unit in here, and I, I just don't know. I think you'd run four of these and two Takame Kazuchi and then something else in there, but 
I I just don't know. Like this card's good though. Let's see, Absolution Lion King Mithril Ezel. Uh, he is a G Persona flip. So card plus one. Try to copy himself face up. You have a heart with Ezel in its card name. You unlock all of your locked cards. Then you can look at the top five cards of your deck and search for one rear guard. Call to a rear guard circle. Shop your deck and increase that unit in this card's power by the original power of the unit called its effect until the end of turn. So it's in pretty much anti link joker as it'll unlock your entire board. Then you can look at the top five card, call anything from among those top five, and then it gets a power boost equal to its own power, and so does this guy. This guy getting the power boost, sort of relevant. It is nice though that he doesn't need to have two or more face-up units in the G zone, so he can set up your uh, Grow Up Paladin and Heartbreak dude that's coming out in August, but as it is, well, the only issue I have with this guy is he needs Ezel to work with it. Ezel's not good. Like when it comes to playing gold paladins at this point, if you're not playing blue flames, you're doing it wrong. Blue flames, prominence core, prominence flare, and even burstable are all just better than playing an Ezel deck. But if you're someone who's hung on to his Ezels all this time, then this is an okay card. But it's definitely not as good as the other cards in here. Let's see. Moving on to Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon Dragonic Overlord the Ace. So this is a guy that caused some controversy when it was revealed because, well, Kagura players wanted more out of this. Because apparently, already being the best clan in the game and having some of the best cards in the game wasn't good enough. So this guy's effect is counter blast 2 and choose a copy of himself and turn to face up. If the number of face up cards in your G zone is 2 or more, until the end of turn, this guy gets minus 1 drive and, once per turn, you choose a card from your hand, pitch it, and then choose an overlord in your hand and pitch it, and at the end of the battle, if you do that, you can stand this guy, he gets plus 5k. So, let me get this straight. A restanding vanguard that's basically better than Vict Plasma is apparently bad. Oh, Kagura players. You so spoiled. Here's my issue with this card. Or rather, why I think this card is not as bad as some people say it is. Well, I have to have a specific card in my hand. Chances are, if you're in Lacrosse Legion, you already have a dote in your hand anyway that you've been trying to pitch because you're trying to kill the rear guard because that's what most dope players do. And your opponent's like, no, I'm going to perfect guard that. You don't care if they're going to pitch uh, the cross from hand and blow up things. You don't get that restand. With this, though, it is a guaranteed restand. You can take that dote in your hand. You can pitch it in one random card you don't need and get to attack again with plus 5,000 power. This thing is good. Anyone who thinks it's bad is incredibly short-sighted. And then we get this guy. True Brawler, Big Bang Knuckle Turbo. Ah, uh, this guy. So, a while back I made a blog post giving my thoughts on this card and why I, think, why I thought that at the time people were blowing this guy way out of proportion. And for the most part I was right in that while a lot of people were scared about this card as time has settled they're like, eh, it's not actually so bad as it used to be. Granted, part of that is because we have Phantom Blaster Diablo coming up, and, well, that card is degenerate as hell. But, uh, Big Bang Knuckle Turbo's ability to potentially wipe the board, while it is powerful against the top decks of the format, it's only just really good. It's not busted, it's just really good. Like, being able to board wipe is really only helpful against decks that put their entire hand down to make their board, like Aquaforce and Novagrather, Neonectar to some extent, but they call out a deck, but they need, like, generic Neonectar need things to clone, so you do set them back a bit, but let's be honest, generic Neonectar is awful. If you're not playing Musketeers, you're also doing it wrong. And Musketeers can somewhat recover from this. Paladin decks have no problems dealing with this guy. Royal Paladins, they can just call Sword Me down and make a column. Royal pa Gold Paladins can just make an entirely brand new board. And Shadow Paladins don't care because they're sacking off their rear guard, so you're never going to get maximum value out of this guy. And Revengers are an awful matchup for Brawlers to begin with. You you kind of have to rush them fast because it's really difficult dealing with Abyss and Diablo. But as it is, though, this card is really good. It will give Brawlers the boost they need to stay relevant in the format, and it'll make Narakami one of the best control decks out there. Next up, the Mega Colony and Link Joker to an extent. Like, ever since this guy's released, Brawlers have been somewhat of a, well, they have been a consistent meta force in Japan. I don't know how that will translate over here, just because we have a different playstyle than that of Japan. 
we are much more favored to aggro, whereas they like control a bit more. But this card is good. I would pick up at least two of these, and it's probably going to be one of the money cards in the set alongside the ace. As for other money cards, there's Sukiyomi, this guy, the ace. And finally, whoa, I opened this guy. Wrong thing. But Omega Loop Glendios. So, this guy. This guy is good. Card of last two, choose a copy of himself, turn it face up. If a heart with Glendios in its card name, then your opponent chooses one of their rear guards for each of your locked cards with rear guard with reverse in its card name. And they place the top card of their deck into those rear guard face down as locked. Then, if the number of cards in your damage zone is five or more, all of your opponent's locked cards cannot be unlocked during his or her next end phase. So this is going to create a very interesting paradox when playing against Glendios now, as if you put into five damage ever, you risk being put into world end. So you're going to keep them at four damage and try and kill them with a crit. But Glendios will probably be able to easily defend against that, or much better than usual. And yeah, it just makes it kind of puts you in an awkward fourth position as you'll be swinging with the Vanguard trying to crit kill them, and they can block that. And if you don't take crits, or rather you don't check any crits, you're not going to attack with a rear guard because if they block that, or rather if they take the hit, they're going to be at 5 damage and they're going to be able to use this guy's effect. And this guy will have an effect on the game. I don't know how much though, just because again of our different play styles. We play aggressively here, Japan plays more passively, and the major events here are usually best of, well rather, Bushy Road events are best of ones where this guy will do great in. ARG, on the other hand, are best of threes, and I don't know how well this will translate with the upcoming ARG in. Where is it? I think it's Edison or St. Louis? I don't know where like the grand championship for ARG is. I know it's coming up though, I think it's this weekend. So there will be much Rendex flying around, but this will be. A, if you're not going to play Shadow Paladins, then this is a pretty good counter to them, as it forces them to basically go into Diablo to try and kill you, and you will have obviously rear guards to deal with uh, to sack off their skill. So this is a very solid card, and it's probably in the top five of the set. Like As far as the generators go, you really are going for Glendios, Turbo, The Ace, and Tsukiyomi. Like, those are the money cards in this set. The other generation rares are okay. And then there are these two, which are just utter crap. I'm not going to go much into them other than Adam Maelstrom, why would you ever run this when you are kind of so many better options in here? Kind of best one, choose a copy, from, you, uh, rather, choose a card in your G zone, turn it face up, wow, boards are hard. And when he hits the Vanguard and hits the fourth battle that turn him more, and you have a heart with Maelstrom, you can draw a card, and then for every face up, you. Uh, you choose three of your opponent's rear guard, then for every face up copy of this guy, you choose your opponent chooses one of your rear guards and kills it. Whoop you freaking do, it's basically Thavas' skill, except you need to have a maelstrom heart and you're giving up a G unit slot that could be better served as something else. It's like Aqua Force's stride options are like this. First stride, Tidal Bore. Second stride, Lambros. Third stride, Lambros. Fourth stride, they should be dead. Like, if you're playing Aqua Force correctly, you should never really need this guy. They're just, they're a better option than here. I mean, there's Tidal Board Dragon, there's Blizza, which you may sometimes need, and there's also a new unit in here that's, I honestly feel much better. And the fact that this guy needs to be 4th Balamore and hit is also an issue, whereas Davas just has to attack. Tidal Board is on the third attack, so you don't even have to commit a full board. I don't like this guy at all. I think he's one of the worst gen rares in this set. I'd actually would have called him the worst one, but we have a Pock Maker Dragon for that. So, this guy is when he hits the Vanguard, you bind one of your rear guards, and then you call a grade 3 from your deck, and at the end of the turn, you put that unit into the bottom of the deck. If you do so, you get to call the unit that was bound. Why? Why would you ever run this over the already better cards that Gear Chronicle have to work with? Like, when you look at the Gear Chronicle extra deck, you have. Four Rider Clock Dragons. Then you have Fate Wheel Dra Fate Rider Dragon. Then you also have Chronos Command Dragon, Lost Age Dragon. Like that's already seven cards right there. One of which you're probably running a two of. Like this card is just ass. There's no getting around it. Like whoop de do, you're getting like an extra rear guard attack. And it's only just one, and you're calling a Yuri three out of the deck that's supposed to be Strive Fighter. No, this thing is ass, and just avoid it. Worst card in the set.
Okay, so maybe Epoch Maker is not the worst card in the set, but he's definitely the worst Gen Rare and Gear Chronicle player card by far, and I don't think anyone's really going to disagree with me on that one. So that said, let's move on to the Triple R's, which, which there are quite a few good ones. Bear in mind, some of these I'm not too familiar with, because I'm not familiar with some of these clans, but I'll still do my best here. So first up we have Holy Celestial Michael, which is Angel Feather support. Always welcome to the game, as... Angel Feathers are, well, really under-supported. I think the last time they actually got any decent cards was set 12? Yeah, when we got Ramiel Reverse, like, that is a long time ago. Anywho, so, so this card's name, or rather what it does is, a kind of us one, once per turn, you have a heart card with Celestial List card, and you put the top card of your deck into the damage zone, and then you choose a card from your face-up card from your damage zone and call it to rear card. Then, if a face-up card in your damage zone is the same name as a card in your heart, the unit called by this effect gets power plus 5,000 at the end of the turn. This part of the effect, I think, is not going to be relevant all the time, but being able to basically toolbox out of your damage zone, which is something that Angel Feathers do already well, will help, and it's just generic. You just have to be playing a Celestial deck, which is, I think, the only way you would play Angels at the moment. So it's a very good card, cheap, and it just aids in what your deck wants to do. Next up we have True Revenger Drag Ruler Renovent, whose effect is once per turn you choose one of your Revengers and you retire it. Then you have a heart card Revenger and its card name choose your deck for look for your deck for a grade one or less Revenger and its card name call it the rear guard circle, shuffle your deck and that unit in this get plus three thousand until you turn. Very solid card as it's just a one for one it toolboxes out things like Dort it also can such a judge bow if you, it happened to get spun by Gear Chronicle. The only problem I see with this card is competing for space, as the Shadow Pal in the extra deck is already going to be cramped with four Phantom Blaster Diablo, one to two copies of Grim Recruiter, and then once set three drops in July, two copies of Aura Geyser Dragon. So that's already a lot right there. Now you're trying to fit this guy in. For now, though, I think this will see play. Uh, Revenger players will run four Diablo, two Grim Recruiters, and maybe one or two of this guy. But once set three drops, this will become irrelevant, which is a shame because it's a pretty solid effect. But that just goes to show how powerful Shadow Paladins are. They have so many good things that solid cards are seen as unnecessary. Next up, we have Sacred Flame Ultimate Regalia, the meter, who has a very practical effect. It's the only way I can describe it. So, kind of best one, when it attacks the Vanguard and you have a heart with a guy in its card name, you may pay the cost, and if you do, you get the Soul Charge 3 for every one of your heart guards, and choose a card in your damage zone to turn it face up. The unflipping card part is okay, I guess. I mean, Regalia in general only burn one counter blast a turn on a given. Their best attacks are like either no counter blast, Egracel, or one counter blast, Minerva. So the unflipping is okay. The fact though is you get the soul charge three for each of your heart cards. That's amazing. Minerva, okay, you get the soul charge three for your limit break. Egracel, you get the soul charge six for your legion skill. Magic numbers. This card is very good, and I would run two copies of it in Regalia. And once we get the limit break enabler in Sat Four, oh my goodness, Minerva is going to become scary again. Next up we have. Oh god. Here we go. Rikudo Stealth Dragon Drururakan. Oh, someone's gonna just bash me for that one, but I, I tried. So, this is a Nubatama G unit, and the Nubatama G units in this set are good. Like, this clan. This is one of the clans that it's really under supported. In fact, I think this is the least supported clan in the game. But the reason is because their mechanic in general is just so good. Being able to force your opponent to discard cards in your hand, they're start, by the looks of it, they're going back to that mechanic. And it's going to be scary when these guys get actual good support in probably set 5. Like, this is a plan that you always have to be just slightly aware of because of just how potent their effect is. And this guy's effect is really good. His effect is kind of last to, when he attacks the Vanguard, keyword just attack. He doesn't have to hit. If you do, uh, your opponent chooses one of their, or rather, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and bind it face up, and your opponent chooses a card from their hand and binds it face down. Then, if you have a heart with Shura Stealth Dragon in its card name, 
at the end of the turn, those cards bound go to the drop zone. And if you don't have a sure stealth dragon heart, then they go back to the hand. So, assuming you're playing in a sure stealth dragon deck, which you probably should as they do have a legion, this card will basically remove a card from the field and remove a card from your opponent's hand. In addition to them probably dropping a PG or shielding, you can out any rear guard with this. You can knock cards out of the hand, and all you need is just counter blasts. He's not a G flip. This thing is stupid good. One of the best triple R's in the set. Then we have Super Ancient Dragon Pearly Titan, who I honestly think is underwhelming, but. I know a Tachikaze player, and he loves this kind of death, and he'll try and find ways to make this work. His effect is when you place this thing on the Vanguard Circle, and if you have a heart with Ancient Dragon in its name, you choose one of each player's rear guards and retire them, and this card gains power equal to those the combined power of the units killed by this effect. Then, if the power gained by this effect is 20,000 or more, he gets plus one crit until end of turn. The problem I have with this is that 20,000 marker right there. Most people only have 9,000 power rear guards in play, so you're going to have to field an 11k rear guard beforehand in order to get this guy's plus one crit off. Otherwise, you're going to be sacking the 9k and their 9k, and he'll get plus 18,000. So all he's going to do is just swing and become big and scary. Now, he is a 1 for 1 in that you're giving up one of your rear guards for one of your opponent's rear guards. You get to choose which one dies, so you can pick off back row things and starters, but yeah, like, it's okay, do not play this to get the crit, play this for the removal, that's the only way I see this thing being really good. Next up, we got Cosmetic Snowfall Shirai Yuki, a Morokumo unit, who, well, the clan itself actually becomes pretty potent after next set. So this card's effect is, choose when this unit is based on Vanguard Circle, choose one of your hearts, search your deck for one card with the same name as the card in, in your heart, Call it to rear guard, shuffle the deck, and you have a heart card with Shirayuki and its card name at the end of the turn. Return a unit called to your hand and choose a card from your hand to discard it. And if you don't, at the end of the turn, put the unit called by this effect and move on your deck. The problem I have with Murakumo is that they're calling units out of the deck and they go back into the deck. I mean, yeah, that's supposed to be how they're ninja like, but you. The problem is, though, Diablo. Uh, you leave yourself with an open board against Diablo? You're gonna die. And well, that's one problem. The other problem is too is like you're like generating pseudo advantage that you're calling things out, but you don't get to keep them. So you don't get to have a board. And like it it's like a discussion itself on why I don't feel like the Murakumo client is that good. The reason why they will be better after next set is they get a restanding unit. And I know that's incredibly narrow minded to me of saying so, but like I feel like the idea of like calling us out of the deck for advantage is being done better by Neo Nectar of all things. And look at them, they get to keep their units, and G Neo Nectar still can't do anything in the game. So, what does that go to tell you about this guy? It would be better if Morikawa could find the units called by this effect, and then you could call those bound units out in the next turn. That way, you get to pull the units out of the deck, thin yourself with triggers, and then keep your guys in the deck, out of the deck for later use. Like, I really feel like this Murakumo gets the short end of the stick on a lot of things. Let's see, War Deity Asura Kaiser, the Nova Godbridge unit whose effect is uh, kind of uh, once per turn, choose a grade 3 from your drop zone and put it on the top of your deck, shuffle your deck, and until the end of the turn, this unit gets when this unit's drive check reveals a grade 3 card. If you have a heart card with Asura Kaiser and its card name, choose up to four of your rear guards and stand them. So this guy. This guy makes the already pretty strong Ashura Kaiser deck much better. I mean, yeah, you have to reveal a great through through this, but that's not that hard to pull off with the a dedicated Ashura Kaiser deck. Like, I think this will be one of the more underrated versions of the deck, and I think Ashura Kaiser Nova Grapplers might actually do something. Or maybe the Beast AD build will still be stronger, but... Uh, this is one of those uh, great triple R's in the set that people aren't going to write a whole lot about, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if this does some decent damage. Fairly solid card. Uh, let's see, Hyper Metal Borg Heavy Duke. Oh boy, Dimension Police, my favorite client in the game. So what does this guy do? Kind of two. When this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may pay the cost. And you, if you do at the end of the battle, this unit, until the end of the battle, pardon me, this unit gets an ability of, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, draw a card for each of your hearts. 
Then, if you have a hard card or venable organ that's card name at the end of battle, your opponent cannot pull grade one or greater cards in the hand of the garden circle. So, remember how annoying it was dealing with Sin Buster if it could swing for large amounts of damage and you couldn't block it? This guy gets to be Sin Buster, but for just only a counter blast two, and you get the draw cards if it hits, potentially two, like, no. This card will see play. It's good. Metal Borgs just became a lot better. I don't know if they'll be strictly better than the Dexa, the version of Dimension Please that we have now, but Laurel is at four here, and you have a very good chance of getting Laurel to hit now. Ooh, just, I hate this clan so much. Let's see, Grand, Great Warrior Dudley Geronimo. This guy's effect is kind of us one. Choose a card named itself in the G zone and turn it face up. You have a heart card with Dudley and it's card name. If it's at the end of the turn, you get an auto skill of when your rear guard attacks, that you get power plus 5,000 power, and at the end of the battle, put that unit at the bottom of your deck. Then, if the number of rear guard face up cards in your G zone is two or more, you also get the skill of your rear guards can make an attack in the back row. This is a stupid good card. So, all of your things get plus 5,000 power, then they go into the deck. That's irrelevant because you're probably going to try and crush them being you know, they're playing Spike Brothers. And your units can attack in the back row. So you can throw anything in the back and do stuff. Amazing card. The problem? Dudley. Looking at it right now, um, there's Dudley Emperor, Dudley Lucifer, and Dudley Moses. Dudley Emperor is the only one I even remember being good. The other ones I don't know anything about. I'm just like That's the problem. Like Good card, but... No, like if it was uh, just for something called Bad End or Oval, this thing would be disgusting. Moving on, we get M Amon's Talon, Mark uh, uh What's this thing? Kind of asked one what's returning if a heart card with Amon and this card name. Choose two of your rear guards with Amon, and, and they get 3k for every 5 cards in your soul until they turn. So, pretty simple card. It makes your rear guards get super big for every 5 cards in your soul. Amon charges really fast, and... This will be something that will be more potent after set 3 drops. Pretty solid. Silverthorn Dragon Master of Mystic Luke. You want to talk about a card that can do a lot of things for a clan. Look no further than this thing. So once per turn, choose two of your rear guards and put them into the soul. If you have a heart card with Luke here in its card name, Soul Charge 2, choose two cards with Silverthorn in its name from your soul and call them the separate rear guards. This card is incredibly helpful for the Silverthorn deck. It allows you to basically correct your board and set yourself up for when uh, Venus Lucia decides to go off on her turn. As you can move things like Zelma's into the soul in order to call, call them back out and then use Zelma's skill to swap things into the soul and just filter. You can also power up your upright lines to insane levels if you happen to have those two in play. And then you just move two Zelma's into the soul, call them back out. That's plus six to your upright lines. Then you have Zelma swap things and then that's more power. Very good unit. Pale Moon needed this thing. And while it's not enough to make them super competitive, it's enough to make Silver Thorns something a legitimately good deck again. Moving on, we have Ice Prison Hands Deity, Kokaitis Negative. You want to talk about clans that get the short end of the stick? You've got Mega Colony, you've got Mu Nubatama, you've got Mu Murakumo. Say what you will, though, those things have decent stuff going for them. Grand Blue, on the other hand, I'm pretty certain this is the clan that Bushiroad hates the most, as they just can't get a break ever. And look no further than this guy, who, kind of must one, put three cards from you to the top of your deck into the drop zone. You have a heart with Kokaitis in its card name, you choose up to one card from your drop zone and call it to rear guard. If you call a unit with Kokaitis in its card name, you choose a grade one or less unit from your drop zone and call it as well, plus 4,000 power until the end of the turn. So it's a nice plus one, you call something from the drop, and if you have a call of Kokaitis, you call another unit from the drop. Problem is, you you have to play Kokaitis. I don't even remember Kokaitis Reverse being good to begin with, and that's the only one I can think of that you want to run. I mean, there's the original Kokaitis, but he's a 10k base. and I mean, Kokaitis Reverse is a cross, so it's just like, I don't know. I, it's a really strong effect, and it's a step in the right direction for Manlu, just again though, you have to run a cart main that I just don't think is all that great. Like Grand Blue really needed sub clan support on the level of say that Brawlers and other clans did, but I guess this clan just doesn't sell in Bushy Road's eyes. And it's a shame because they have a really neat mechanic and they're one of the other few blue clans in the game, the other ones being Aqua Force and 
Bermudas, and while Bermudas, actually I won't get into Bermudas just yet. So the other blue clan aside from Aqua Force and Grand Blue is Bermuda Triangle, which is a clan that focuses around bouncing themselves back to the hand and other things. It differs from subclan to subclan, like duos revolve around having multiple units with the same name in hand. They have a three standard prisms. I don't really remember what they do. I remember Labrador being something that would get big and scary if you didn't have a PG. Uh, anyway, what we have here though is a G unit that supports both subclans, which is weird, as I'm hoping they actually do something like this in the future with other genius, like, I don't know, Eradicator, Shotgun, Brawler, Dragon unit? I, it'd be nice. Or it could be like, uh, uh, Supreme, Eradicator, Emperor, uh, Dragonic, Kaiser, Brawler. I can only hope. But anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's get on to this thing. So, when it hits the Vanguard, you choose one of your rear guards and return to your hand. Then, if you have a heart with card with Prism in its card name, choose a card from your hand and call it to rear guard and it gets plus 5,000 power in your turn. So, you can attack with something, attack with this, it hits, bounce something, call it back, gets plus 5, swing with that. Pretty neat there. If you have a card, heart card with dual in its card name, you search your deck for your one card with the same unit, is no card returned by this effect, reveal it to your opponent and put it in your hand and shuffle your deck. Which also aids in the dual mechanic of thinning your deck of cards so that you'll have more trigs left and a uh, large hand like duos. Once they've gotten done their stuff a couple times, they usually have a giant hand. You have to fight through that in order to win against them. And it helps set up their limit breaker too. So pretty solid card. And then we get to what I think is arguably the best triple R in the set. Carapace Mutant Deity Machining Destroyer. So Mega Colony is a clan that for the longest of the time has been well seems bad. As their mechanic is was meh, and when Link Joker came around, they basically took the stun mechanic and said, "Hey, this we're gonna do it better by making it so you can't even call over the units." So what does Mega Colony do? They get the ability to stun the Vanguard, and by that I mean you can't stand. Also, it just allows to be that when you stride, you don't get to you your G unit assumes the same position as your Vanguard. So if you stride over a Vanguard that is at rest, you can't stand back up, which is incredibly powerful in today's Vanguard because we're so Vanguard through reliant on um, generating our advantage that being able to stun the Vanguard can just cripple certain decks. And why am I even talking about this? Because, well, machinings for Mega Colony get a G unit that does this. So, once per turn, Counter Blast 1 card with machining in its card name. If a heart card with machining in its card name, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and that unit cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. Then, if the number of rear guards you have with machining in its card name are four more, choose one of your opponent's vanguards, and that unit cannot stand during your opponent's next stand phase. This is an incredibly powerful skill. It will slow down decks to an immense level, and in order to basically get around this, you will have to rewrite a grade three, then you'll have to pitch another card to scribe, so you're going neg two just for your G unit. And then there's the whole issue of calling your rear guards, like, Without your, if all of your rear guards are at rest and you need to make a push, you're gonna have to call over them, which is basically the same as retire a bunch. So you're going super minus in order to make a push against them, and the Mega Colony player is not gonna actually care that much because you've already given up a lot of cards from your hand in order to make a push again, making it that much harder for you to block them when they stun you again. The fact that this guy can just keep going and going, like Mega Colony are a legitimately scary deck now. I'd say they are the best anti-meta deck in the game. Would you know? They're getting support in GSEC 4. Scary. Uh, let's see. School Special Investigator Leo Paul Chaser for Great Nature. Now, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you have a heart card with Leo Paul in its guard name. Choose one of your rear guards. And at the end of the turn, it gets 4,000 power. And at the end of the turn, retire this unit. And during your end phase, when this unit is put into the drop zone from a rear guard circle, search your deck for one card with the same name as that card. Reveal it to your opponent, put it to your hand, and shut your deck. Now, if I remember correctly, Leo Paul himself has the effect of when your rear guard is put into the drop zone by an effect, by your effect, you limit break, counter blast one, and call it. So, if you go on both this with School Hunter Leo Paul, you get to call the unit that you retire back to the rear guard circle and search another copy of it, which is pretty nice. The only problem is you have to run it this guy, which I honestly think is not that great. Leo Paul reverse. So limit break is during your own turn, so you won't actually be able to do a whole lot with it. 
So, another case of a really solid card, but the heart condition really kills it. Then we have White Lily Musketeer Captain Cecilia. Once per turn, count of us one, choose two of your rear guards with Musketeer in its card name and retire them. If you have a heart card with Cecilia in its card name, look at five cards in the top of your deck, search for three Musketeers, and call them a rear guard and shuffle your deck. So this card is basically a better Cecilia and Vera in terms of what it does. And it's a very strong card, actually. It's one of those instances where it's so it's so good that you might even consider running the hard card just to make use of it because Cecilia herself isn't that bad. I mean, you know, she's 10k base, which is an issue. However, her one her main skill, which is sack a unit to look at the five cards from the top of your deck and call a musketeer, that's not restricted to limit break. So if you happen to sit on this use your skill a couple times, filter your deck, like it helps do what musketeers want to do, which is filter the deck for non-trigger units. So that by the time you go into Vera and Legion with her, you'll be swinging with your super powerful rear guards and flipping triggers all the bloody time. And I might consider building a musketeer deck based around Cecilia, where I run two copies of this, four Jingle Flower Dragon, a Prima Vera, and a Boria, or I might not. It's still a card I'm going to try and pick up a couple of copies of, as it is good. And moving on, we get Holy Dragon Sanctuary Guard with Gallier. Oh, we're moving on to the Double R's, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So now we're moving on to the Double R's units, and this is support for Sanctuary Guard, which I don't think anyone saw coming. Sanctuary Guard came in the Mega Trial deck. Uh, here we are, Sanctuary Guard Dragon. Uh, Sanctuary Guard Dragon is an interesting backup vanguard where its low break is he gets plus three for every one of your grade ones in play and uh, when you ride him you may search your deck for a grade one or less royal paladin called the rear guard all by pitching a royal paladin from your hand so he's not that bad and with holy dragon sanctuary guard regalia this actually makes a new variation of royal paladin possible because his skill is auto Continuous during your turn, if you have a heart card or sanctuary in this card name, all the units in your front row get 3k for every one of your grade 1 or less rear guards. So, if you happen to happen to be playing something like Jewel Knights, and with this guy as your backup grade 3, and you happen to have 3 grade 1s in play, your front row gets 9,000 power. Okay, that's an extra stage of guarding out of your opponent. If you flip a crit or any trigger that's more guarding out of your opponent, it just helps you like continue to push more. And it's a really solid card with a really solid deck. Like, honestly, think that yeah, Sanctuary Guard Dragon may end up doing the same here as it did in Japan, where it starts surpassing Thing Saber. Bit of a bold claim on my part, but Sanctuary Guard Regalia is actually really good, and I'd pick up your Sanctuary Guard Dragons now if you plan on building the deck because he's only available one way, and that's in that Mega Child deck. Moving on, we have Rain Clown calling Nine Headed Dragon King for Oracle Think Tank. I think this is their first dragon, which is weird. Uh, count us one. At the end of the battle, as you unit attacks the vanguard, you may pay the cost of you. Choose up to three cards in your hand, return them to your deck, shuffle your deck, and draw a card for each card returned. I think this would be a good one up in the deck. If you happen to have, like, oh, I drew all of my heal triggers, I don't want them in my hand. Well, you can just put them into the deck and draw three cards. Simple as that. Nice tech option. And again, it's just more cards in the already cramped old OTT extra deck. Next up we have Holy Seraph Burial for Angel Feathers, and her effect is when he hits the Vanguard, you look at the three cards on top of your deck, search one card from among them and put it face up to your damage zone and shuffle your deck, and if you put a card from the damage zone this way, choose a face up grade two or less from your damage zone and call it to rear circle, and it gets close to 1,000 power. So it's more damage zone tutoring. You can put things in your damage zone that you need in the damage zone for your rear guard for your deck because that's how the plan operates. And the unit called by this effect gets plus 2,000 power. Granted, it's grade 2 or less, but that's what most of the damage zone is these days. Anyway, so definitely a solid card. Next up, we get Dark Knight Ephenizian. What the heck does this thing do? Uh, choose one of your rear guards and retire. When this unit is placed on Vanguard, you may hit the cost. We do this, he gets plus 7,000 power. When he attacks the rear guard and hits, oh, when he hits the Vanguard, you do the rear guard and retire. This is not good at all. There are much better things to run in the Shadow Paladin deck. As I already mentioned when I talked about Drag Ruler Benefit. 
no reason why you ever use this thing. It's garbage. Golden Dragon, Scourge Point Dragon. So here we have Bull Paladins again, and this card's actually really good. So this guy's ability is simple. When he's in play, whenever you call a rear guard from your deck, that and this card get 5,000 power points in the turn. If we've learned one thing about Liberators is that they can flood the board very quickly. And while well, that's going to make this guy big and make anything you call off of Aggro Veil really big, there's going to be the Generation Attack coming, or rather the Amber Clone coming in set 3. This card's pretty solid, and I'd consider running 2 of it, or maybe even 4. It's a much better card than the upcoming Spear Cross Dragon, which is kind of sad. Next up, we get Great Angel Doom Brace for Genesis. Also one of those cards that people were like, eh, at first, but I think it's actually pretty solid. Uh, once per turn, you choose up to two of your rear guards with, and they gain 5,000 power, or rather, let me rephrase that, once per turn, you soul blast to me. Choose two of your rear guards, they get 5,000 power within the turn, and the number of cards in your soul store are less than soul charge three. So this card does something for Genesis that I never thought I'd say. It makes your rear guards relevant. Because for the most part, it's like, oh, call your rear guards, they do nothing now. Like, Soul Charge 3 from Drop Zone, or call Rear Guard that basically is just there as a vanilla. This turns those vanillas into beat sticks, as you're powering up either two lanes by one stage, or one lane by two stages, forcing more cards of your opponent's hand to guard with, boss setting up Minerva and Yggdrasil for their kill plays. Again, solid card. I consider running a couple of these too, and it even Soul Charges if you happen to be down in a considerable amount of soul. It can help thin out your soul actually. Up triggers for you, Grey Soul, and you can like Legion and do stuff. Very solid card. Like it a lot. Divine Dragon Knight Zom. This is the other Togro unit, and his effect is kind of last one. When your opponent's rear guard is retired, do an effect from one of your cards. When you pay the cost, you do choose another of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So, as long as you're able, you're able to kill something, you can kill something else. Um, the only way I see this really happening in the Dodax is if you use, what's his name, Burnout. So, for Dodex, this isn't going to see much play, but I think in Perdition Dragon Club, this will be very solid, because you have Menace Laser Dragon who will proc this thing. A very okay card. Honestly, I honestly think Narakami definitely got the, ben the better of the genius in this set. At least that's what I want to say, but then I remember there's the actual guy in here. Uh, the other Nubatama guy, Gedasurakin? His effect is, when he hits the Vanguard, your opponent chooses a card in their hand and pitches it. I think, honestly, most people are going to let this guy hit, as when you're thinking about it, you're basically picking perfect guarding, which is minus two cards out of your hand, just to block a dude that's going to take a card out of your hand. Granted, there's nothing you really want to discard in your hand anymore anyway. You don't want to pitch triggers because they're guarding. You want to pitch ones because they're PGs or striders. Grade twos are beaters. Grade threes are striders. So there is really no win-win situation with this guy. He's a pretty good pressure unit, but and Nubatama are like legitimately decent now with this thing, or rather these cards. Moving over, we get Tachikaze, who get Destruction Tyrant, Arch Raider. Uh, let's see, choose a, one of your rear guards and a Tyrant. When this unit attacks a rear guard, Vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do. You can rebound, the unit gets power plus 5,000. If he hits the Vanguard, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and a Tyrant. Pretty meh skill, not like. You're killing something to get a potential retire just by swinging into a PG or whatnot. Chances are your opponent's going to let the attack it because they're giving up a rear guard for one of theirs, so they don't. It's just a break even. Like Tachikaze really didn't get a whole lot out of this set. They just basically got G units for the sake of striding. Let's see, ambush, st demon, stealth, road, Kaga Mijishi. Uh, when this unit, when your unit is placed on rear guard circle, you have two or more cards with the same name as that unit until the end of turn. That unit gets plus. 2,000 power, and this unit can attack in the back row. Not bad. It allows you things that you duplicate out of the deck to attack in the back, like 11k beat stick, and great threes and other such. So I'd say this is the much better of the G units for Murakumo in the set. And this will go nicely with their Resander coming out in the next set. And that's really it. Like, I really do think that Murakumo again got the short end of the stick here, but that's just because their mechanic really needs to be improved upon. I could be, people will probably debate with me on this one, but like, I don't know. I just, 
Yeah, Hayaki Vogue Reverse is like the best thing that they've got so far. Okay, I definitely take back what I said before. Uh, Kagero definitely got the better end of it for not, uh, for G units when it comes to the non gen rares, because this thing, uh, I keep forgetting that they have like these, uh, there's like this other deck for Narakami that's built around nobles and having multiple copies of the same game and playing. Like, I'm talking about, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Vindra? Jindra? There are these noble things where they get plus 10 in a crit for every other copy of these guys in play. And this is what this guy is based off of. His effect is when he attacks the vanguard for each of your noble rear guards, your opponent chooses one of his or, his or her rear guards, binds it face up, and if three or more cards are retired by this effect, or rather you retire first then bind, then this unit gets plus one crit for until the end of the battle. So it's a potential multi-card multi nuke. But you have to be playing Noble Narakami, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even know where to begin building that thing. As is though, it's definitely disappointing considering that in this set, Narakami gets Turbo. Like, I was really hoping for a Dragonic Descendant G units, or even Dungary, like, Lord Nels, he can use their help. As is though, this card's like, this card's not good. And then we have Meteo Kaiser Tribute, the other Nova Grappler G units. Uh, kind of last one, when, you're rear, when your rear guard stands from an effect of one of your cards, you may pay the cost if you do. That unit gets plus 10, 2000 power, and then choose one of your opponent's rear guards with power less or equal to than that unit's power and kill it. It's a little niche effect, but I think like the options for Nova Grapplers are just better. Like You'd be running for Vic Plasma. Uh, two of the on hit dude, maybe one or two copies of tribute, but I think um, Blizza and you know I think Blizza would be better. Maybe just one of these. As it is though, it's yeah. Let's see. Then for the Dimension Police, we get Dark Super Superhuman Pretty Cat. Uh, kind of us one. If you, this unit's power is thirty four thousand or greater, choose your opponent's vanguards and it gets minus five thousand power until the end of turn. Uh, it's basically, no, there is not if or buts about it. It's really bad. Oh boy, I lose 5,000 power. You're against your giant ass unit that I'm probably going to be PGing anyway. DPs have so many more options to run over this thing. I mean, they have the Cosmic Heroes, for God's sakes. Now, this thing's bad. Don't run it. The Nebula Dragon Maximum Seal Dragon. This is the other Link Joker unit, and honestly, you're probably just going to be running four of these, and or three of these, and four copies of the dude from the new trial deck from Messiahs until the next set comes out. As his effect is, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you pay the cost we do, it gets 5,000 power for every locked card until the end of the battle for Counterblast 1. So if you stride this thing on top of Alter Ego Messiah, you Counterblast 1, lock of one of yours, and lock one of theirs, so it's going to be getting plus 10,000 power. whoop you do. Like, it really is underwhelming, but you will run it just because it's all you get. But honestly, I think I'd run Cray Elementals instead. Then we get the other Spike Brother G unit, Godly Speed Flash Bruce, who is choose a card from your hand and put it into your soul. When this hits the Vanguard and you pay the cost, if you do, search your deck for a card called Rear Guard, shuffle your deck, and it gets power plus 5,000. It's not awful. But it's not outstanding. You hit and you get an extra attack with one of your rear guards. Uh, honestly, uh, it's something that spikes can go into while they set up their bad end dragger push. But I still think that's probably going to be your better bread and butters. Bloody oval over bad end dragger. Then we get the other pale moon miracle of Luna Square Clifford, who is when it hits the vanguard, choose a great two or less card from your soul. Call it the rear guard circle, and that unit gets power plus two thousand until the end of the turn. Does not go back into the soul, unlike the on hit grade two silver thorn unit. So it's pretty good, actually. You get to call out a Zelma, or uh, that would be the ideal call because you call out Zelma in an open rear guard slot, and you suck in a rear guard and call another unit back out, and you get to swing for eleven thousand, which or eighteen thousand actually if you're doing a sixteen k column. Or 20,000 if you're doing this behind a uh, the 12k attacker. So pretty solid. I'd probably run three of these. Let's see. 
Interdimensional Beast Upheaval Pegasus is the other Gear Chronicle G unit. It's the better one by far. When his unit is placed on Vanguard, if you have a heart guard with Chrono Jet in its card name, your opponent puts all of his or her rear guards in the bottom of their deck in any order. And if each card put into the deck by this effect, your opponent calls the top card of his or deck into an open rear circle. So, you're basically spinning away your opponent's board so they can call random things off the top of the deck. Not that great. It's really not. Oh, poor Gear Chronicle. Maybe set four will finally be what gets you get to be an amazing deck. Then we have Grand Blue's second G unit, Pirate King of the Abyss Blue Heart. Got a best one, choose up to two cards from your drop zone, and call them in separate rear guards with a unit. Oh, okay, so you're calling these things over your rear guard circles. Wow! So you can't even call over empty rear guard slots. This thing's not good at all. Ew. Like, if they had made it so you could have called it to any rear guard circle, this thing would be amazing. I mean, Grand Blue could really use something of that kind of power, but nope. We gotta ruin the card and make it so that you don't even get the gold plus. Whereas, Gold Paladins and Royal Paladins and Shadow Paladins get the call units out of the deck, which I feel is much better than calling out of the drop zone because you're thinning your deck out of cards. Again, Bushy Road seems to hate Grand Blue with a passion, and I don't know why. And then we get to, let's see, Legend of the Glass Shoe Amoris. This is the other Bermuda skill. Uh, when the unit is placed on Vanguard Circle, choose two of your rear guards and return them to the hand. Pretty simple, but it'll proc your duo and prison skills. Aqua Force's second G unit, and honestly, this is the card I would actually would pick up. One, yeah, just one copy of Marine General of the Heavenly Silk, Socrates. Kind of last one, when this unit attacks the Vanguard and hit, you know, when he attacks, and if it's the third Balamore, you hit the cost, we do, uh, let's see. You if you do that unit, gets Oh, no, it's when your unit attacks the Vanguard. So, yeah. Let me rephrase this. So, when he's in play and anything of yours attacks the Vanguard and it hits the third battle of that turn or more and we pay the cost, you get power plus 5,000. 5, it's an auto skill. It has no restrictions. So, basically, you can do your standard Aqua Force plays, but everything that you swing with that's after the third, that's on third attack of war, will always be plus 5,000. This is a really good push card for when it looks like when you've done other things like if it looks like you can't Lambros and you only can get three attacks on do it and like I think this is an incredibly underwhelming like, wow I cannot speak right now I think this is an incredibly underestimated card and it's far better than Admiral Maelstrom in the deck the fact he only needs third battle is really good and that's the reason why I think this card is worth playing to begin with you can run three title boards or two, one of these, one Blizzard need be, and then four Lamros, and there's your extra deck right there. And he's only a kind of last one as well. Then we get Mega Colony second G unit, Deforestation, Mutant Deity, Jaggy Devil. Uh, when your unit attacks hits the Vanguard, use a rear guard in your opponent's front row and back row, and those units cannot stand in your opponent's next stand phase. So it stuns two on hit, but let's be honest here, the only thing you're really using for that deck is Machining Destroyer. Let's see, Great Nature's second G unit is Omniscience Dragon, Wisdom Teller Dragon. When this unit attacks, hits the Vanguard, choose one of your rear guards. And it's an inner turn, it's power plus 4,000. And when this unit attacks the Vanguard, and this unit's power is 20,000 or greater, draw a card. Given that most decks will set up 16,000 lines, this is going to work. And Great Nature gets to draw more cards. Awesome, and it doesn't cost anything. So it's a great first stride. Sacred Tree Dragon, Multi Vitamin Dragon. Uh, when your unit is placed on Rear Guard Circle, choose up three of your cards in the same name as that unit, and they get Fire plus 5,000 until the end of the turn. Pretty solid card. I'd say it works a lot better with with Musketeers than standard Neo Necker, as well. You get to possibly call a Murka, and then you can have those Murkas get plus 5,000 power in addition to their own skills. I mean, it's basically there for. It's a good first stride when you're setting up for Jingle Fire Dragon. And then moving on to the Cray Elementals of the set, we get to Rain Element Medu, who's actually really good. When this unit is based on Vanguard Circle, if you have a heart card with an original power of 10,000 or less, choose a grade 3 card from your drop zone and put it into your hand. Given that most Legion units will obviously have a 9,000 power Legion mate, 
you can stride this on top of that. Get a grade three, you pitch through your back of your hand, and you can continue to stride. This is a nice one of in a lot of stride decks. And for decks that run 10,000 base vanguards like Cecilia, this is also a nice one of. And then lastly, Light Elemental Peeker, whose effect is GB1. Uh, when this unit, when you know, when your opponent a unit attacks a vanguard, choose one of your vanguards, and if that unit's power is 10,000 or less, that unit gets power plus 1,000 to the end of the battle. So just make sure 10k vanguards become 11k vanguards, which is good offensively, and it just helps you hit for magic numbers. And that's really it for the clan itself. A bit of a lengthy video, but I had 50 cards to go over, and I hope this gives you guys a fairly good idea of what to go after in the set. In my opinion, the top 5 cards in this set are the Ace, Turbo, Omega Loop, Tsukiyomi, and then Machine Destroyer. Like, those are, in my opinion, the best cards in the set. And, yeah, if you pull an Ace or a Turbo or a Glendios, you're in pretty good spirits. If you pull an Epoch Maker, I feel really bad for you. Till next time, though, this is Blue Star 899, Jack.